I'm joined by Don Mattingly. Don, your memories mostly came across the street, but is there still something to be said for coming to New York and visiting the Bronx? Oh, absolutely. It's always, uh, I always love coming to New York in general. Uh, my wife and I have enjoyed over the last few years. We kind of come every year, see a couple shows, hang out. It's always a little different at the ballpark just because of the past and where, who, I'm, who I'm with. So uh, that always makes it a little interesting. You say interesting. What's odd about it? Well, I, I've never really been in this building much, right? So I came here with, with L.A. I uh, brought Miami here. Probably my best memory is us in Miami clinching here on this field uh, to be able to get into the playoffs in 2020 with a really young team, which was fun. Um, but just coming here, right, it's not – It's it doesn't – obviously, times move, move on, but it's not the same as, like, knowing all the crooks and crannies of the stadium. What do you remember about the old feel of that old stadium? I think just the noise and the energy. Uh, it seemed a little different, and I'm, maybe I'm just just old, right? But it seemed like the noise was different, and uh, the energy was really good there. Um, and I think all your memories, right? Coming up as a young player out of the minor leagues, walking through the tunnel uh, of the dugout and seeing the stadium, all that's like... That's how you grew up, right? So you have special memories of all that. We're not going with old. We're going with seasoned on this set, Here we go. Don. And you mentioned, you, you mentioned some of the memories of when you came up seeing the field for the first time. What are some other memories that stand out about your time with the Yankees? Oh, I mean, just tons of memories, right? Uh, I think the one thing I don't think I'll ever forget is the feel of that playoff game in, in 95, running onto the field and the place was just electric and it was just so much fun and the energy in that building was incredible. That's probably one of mine. Um, obviously, just, you know, you get your first games in Yankee Stadium. I mean, uh, the batting title race was was great, but just so many good memories of, of good things that happened there. You mentioned the batting title race, and while it was several years ago, do you remember it like it was yesterday? Because you look at where your average was going into that weekend. You were ahead of Dave Winfield, but then you went one for seven, and then that final day of the season, an unbelievable day at the plate for you to win it. Yeah, I, I remember it, and you know what I remember about it more than anything is Dave Winfield and how he treated me during that whole season. I was basically a rookie and Dave was a veteran so you're calm, kind of the underdog and you know how underdogs go people seem to be for the underdog um, so that w it was tough on him and for me it was a lot easier I was a young player hitting 340 and really loving life at that point <laughs> with nothing to worry about and nothing to lose what is your advice to young players now when they come up having been through it uh, I think anything is just just it's the same game and I think that's the thing that never changed and I always felt like and I because I was always nervous about coming to New York but the field is the same and, and so it's the same game it's the same principles uh, you know as a hitter get a good pitch hit a ball hard what's your game plan uh, defensively or offensively or bait run the bases it's all the same and I think the the, clo the quicker you get to that and get past of everything that goes on around the big leagues and in New York or whatever, the better off you are. You mentioned being nervous, but fans certainly couldn't tell, and they absolutely loved you then. They still love you now. What do you think it was about your style of play and the way you went about your business that really endeared you to Yankee fans? I, I don't know, honestly, but, you know, I love playing, and I think uh, a New York fan feels that. Uh, I feel like I knew how to play. And they also understand that, like, you get a guy over, you get a bunt down, you make the right play. Um, I don't know. I just tried to play hard. And, and I think New York is a no-excuse town for me. Uh, I've always told guys, don't make excuses in New York. They don't want to hear it. They've seen it all. They've seen great, so many great players come through here that don't make excuses just just accept what happened hey I'll, i'm gonna get better and move forward do you think that aspect of it made you better as a player that it wasn't no excuse kind of town i think it was good for me because i came up with really no fanfare and i remember coming up straw was coming up across town doc was coming up across town and those guys came in with all kinds of attention i was kind of coming up as a guy that couldn't really run and couldn't throw and didn't have any power and nobody really expected much uh, other than myself, I think. I think I expected more than anybody else. Um, and I was able to just play and grow into a role. And I never, 
I never got away from always trying to get better. I always wanted to improve. I always wanted to get better. Uh, I felt like I was harder on myself than anybody could be. So, so if anybody says, hey, you're not doing the job or you're not getting it done, that was okay for me because I already knew it. Now we have a guy in our booth that I know you know very well in Paul O'Neill. He still calls you Cap. Yeah. Every Polly. time he talks about you, always calls you Cap. So I'm not allowed to call him Polly Pie or anything like that. You you know what? All the secrets can come out right now. Uh -oh. What do you have on Paul? We need to know. No, Paul Paul's an awesome player and probably one of the, my most favorite teammates to play him with. Uh, and I think the nickname the Warrior is a great nickname for him from the standpoint when he got on the field, this guy was all business and expected himself to be great and expected nothing less. Nothing less. Uh, I think it was one of the trades that turned the organization around from the from the, the, the late 80s into the early 90s when it seemed like it was more of a turnover and trying to get back to what the Yankees are. Uh, and he was a, he was one of the key factors in that, and I think that was one of the best trades the Yankees ever made. Another pretty good nickname was Donnie Baseball. Did you like the mm. nickname? Yeah, a lot better than things they could call you, right? <laughs> so it could have been a lot worse than that. Uh, Kirby kind of pinned that on me uh, in multiple you know, times being out or you know, doing some charity functions with, with Kirby. Um, and Kirby got talking in the, in the in the green rooms where you're having fun and, and kind of partying a little bit and and so I, I always liked it. it it could have been a lot worse hey let's focus on the present right now the Blue Jays are right in the thick of it trying to make the postseason in your mind what do you guys need to do to ensure you find yourself in the postseason oh simple win every day and yeah, it's not easy right? it, it really is and, and I think that's really been the mindset uh, as we've gotten down the stretch here, we just knew we were in a dog fight. There were multiple teams fighting, um, and anything can happen at the end of the year. I mean, we're, we're a perfect example. We get swept by the Rangers and what the, everybody considered a huge series. Um, we kind of rebounded from that, swept Boston. They got swept, and all of a sudden, we're leading. So uh, it is an everyday business, and I think you know, I always believe that you can win every day, and, and I've always expected to win every day. And it may not happen, but you can expect to win every day, and it's possible. Well, Yankees fans, hope you guys don't win today, but we do wish you the best of luck the rest of the way. We'll see you north of the border All right. uh, next week. Don, thanks for the time. Sounds good. Thank you.